Welcome to my Soul Series. Soul Series is part of Oprah and Friends, exclusively on XM Radio Channel 156. And you can listen to the entire Soul Series collection on xmradio.com slash Oprah. You may have heard the phrase, prayer changes things, but my guest today has the science to back that up. Dr. Larry Dossey wrote a book called Healing Words, The Power of Prayer and the Practice of Medicine. He was on my show about 14 years ago, and I was fascinated by what he had to say then. Since that time, he has become the leading authority on prayer and medicine and how prayer works in our lives. So I'm really, really, really thrilled to be able to have this conversation with him today. It's uplifting, enlightening, truly powerful. Welcome to Soul Series. Well, welcome again to my Soul Series. So glad you can find time to fit this into your busy schedule. I'm Oprah. And if you share with me an unquenchable curiosity to learn more about that which is greater and more powerful than ourselves, then you are really in the right space uh, because that's the reason why I created this Soul Series to be able to talk on the air about things that really matter to all of us, this deep yearning that we have to, to, to know um, the greatest, highest part of ourselves and be connected to that which created us and to understand that that's where we all come from. Um, I'm really happy today because I get to introduce to you Larry Dossey, who is um, one of the most respected in his field. He wrote the book, The Healing Words, which um, I also read, I don't know, almost 15 years ago for the first time. And what's so exciting about that is that when you first wrote that book, you had all these predictions about what would happen. I think in the back of the book, you talked about predictions about what would happen in the world to come. And I would say almost all of them have come true. You know, Oprah, looking back at those predictions, mm -hmm. uh, I think I was a pretty good prophet. Yes. Uh, because, as you say, almost all of those have proved to be true. Uh, when I made those predictions, I thought that I was probably going out on a limb uh, to the extent that I wouldn't see those come through true in my lifetime. In your lifetime. But the pace of change since uh, that book came out, which put prayer forward yeah. as something really powerful and the healing response. Yeah, Healing Words, The Power of Prayer and the Practice of Medicine, which was written 15 years ago. Yes. Really. Changed the way the medical profession and I think the world looked at prayer. I'm happy to say that that's true. <laughs> yes. When you wrote this book, uh, Healing Words, did you realize that you could obviously come under attack? Did you feel that you were being a mm -hmm. pioneer? Actually, I did come under attack. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, I wasn't sure if I could withstand the criticism or not, mm -hmm. but I knew that what I had to say was right. Mm -hmm. And I had something that believers in prayer and spirituality have not had throughout history. Mm -hmm. It's that pesky little four-letter word, word called data. Mm -hmm. And I knew for the first time that it would be possible to use the word prayer and science in the mm -hmm. same sentence and hopefully get away with it. And as it turned out, that proved to be true. Uh, it came as a shock to most mm -hmm. of my colleagues to discover that there were actually what we call double-blind, randomized, controlled experiments looking at the efficacy of prayer and getting yeah. well. It came as a shock to me when I first discovered that information. And I felt that we were at a point in history where one, in order to be honest with oneself as a physician, had to take a stand. And I decided to come forward with that. It wasn't clear to me that... Uh, I could survive pre professionally doing that. But were you afraid? I, were you afraid? Yes. I, I was and did you afraid. pray a lot? <laughs> <laughs> then and now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I still do. Uh, but as it turned out, the force of the data, the force of, of the information spoke for itself. And to my great surprise, researchers began to come out of the closet doing uh, these uh, additional studies which continued to show that prayer does have a healing effect when you put it to the test in the hospital and the laboratory. You know, when you and I last talked in 1994, there was only one major large human study in prayer. But since then, Oprah, we have an explosion. We've had an explosion of these kinds of studies. 
so that if you fast Studies forward. Studies that prove through good science, you're through, saying, through, through good, good science. compelling, exotic science. That prayer works. Yes. We've got about 21 of those studies now. So we've gone from one to 21 studies. Over half of them show statistical significance showing that prayer works. It's driven the skeptics nuts because they're dedicated basically to the proposition that we know in advance that consciousness can't operate outside the brain and the body. It's okay to talk about mind-body influences, but to talk about your thoughts, your love, your compassion, operating at a distance mm -hmm. through intercessory prayer is just uh, over the top for so many critics, and still is. But the data won't go away. It's there, it's firm, and uh, it's abundant. Well, with over 50 good science experiments proving that prayer results in significant changes in a variety of living beings, wouldn't it seem to reason that by now the scientific community would uh, have difficulty, you know, uh, proving otherwise? Oh, well, they have a great deal of difficulty. But there are some people who are so wedded to the physicalistic yeah. conception of consciousness. That, Only what I can see. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That uh, I think... No matter how compelling the data becomes for some people, they're still going to stick to their guns and say that there must be something wrong with the studies. But the medical schools have come around, and I think that that's the place to look uh, for indication of where this is headed. If the medical schools take this on, then uh, it's not going away. That speaks volumes for the legitimacy of this whole thing about prayer. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Larry Dossie, the man who brought us the data on the on the power of prayer 15 years ago when he wrote Healing Words, The Power of Prayer and the Practice of Medicine. Can you give a specific example for the, our audience listening who perhaps hasn't read? I'm sure there are a lot of you listening who've not read Healing Words. Uh, if any of what we're saying today resonates with you, I would advise that you get that book. That should be one of the standards in your own personal library, I think. think. Can you give us um, a specific example where you definitively proved that prayer works. One of my favorite examples has to do with infertility. Mm -hmm. uh, this study took place uh, in a fertility clinic in Seoul, Korea, uh, in women who really had difficulty getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. They were undergoing in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer in an attempt to have a baby. Uh, unknown to them, they were enrolled in one of these studies in which people were recruited to pray for half of them, but not for the other half. <clears throat> This is what we call a triple blind study, which so means strangers. strangers, yes. The people doing the praying were in Canada and Australia and the United States. Uh, and uh, when they looked at the data, the outcomes, the women who received the uh, prayer from these uh, remote prayer groups had twice the successful fertility rate as the women who were not assigned prayer from these uh, distant individuals. Uh, you know, we talk about the odds against chance in these studies. There was only one chance in 1,000 that you could explain this by, by saying, well, this just happened to, according to chance. This was just a fluke. This is one of the most careful and compelling studies that's been done, but not just in infertility. We've seen these studies now done in patients with advanced AIDS, with heart attack, uh, and uh, in several other illnesses as and well. And how does it exactly work, Larry? <laughs> how does it exactly work? Is it like prayer creates its own vibration? And that vibration or energy changes, change, ch you know, has its own frequency level and then changes the vibration of whatever you're praying for? Well, the short answer is no one knows. Okay. Uh, that's a hypothesis. Uh, I think uh, that we just ought to say out front that this is still very much a mystery. Uh, I don't feel uncomfortable saying that we don't know how it works because in the history of medicine, we often know that something does work be before we have a clue about how it does, you make a long list of those from right. aspirin, right. penicillin, and oh, and so on. And that, that's where we stand with prayer now. There are a lot of hypotheses that are being advanced by world-class scholars about how it may work. My favorite comes out of quantum physics. Mm -hmm. It has to do with something called entanglement. Uh, and uh, what you have in this theory is the uh, idea that even though uh, individuals can be far apart, they can still behave as if they're a single entity. Whereas you change one, the other one changes instantly and, and to the same degree. We draw on analogies from what happens in the subatomic domain here. Mm -hmm. And if it happens with uh, distant electrons or other particles, the thinking is that this may have a corollary uh, 